author and reformer John Ruddick, who has a proposal that he claims will heal the National Party. Welcome to the program, John. Good afternoon, Rita. Thanks very much for having me. No, no, it's a pleasure. Now, the Nationals are in all sorts of strife. The leadership is mm -hmm. weak and under attack. There's infighting, there's leaking. How is your proposal? Tell us first what your proposal is and tell us how it's going to heal these wounds. OK, well, I believe, Rita, that, look, I, I'm going to say this as a friend of the National Party. I mean, I grew up in Tamworth, which doesn't get any more National Party than that. But, look, <laughs> in similar countries to Australia, like uh, the United States, Britain, Canada, New Zealand, there is one right of centre party. There is no distinction between urban conservatives and rural conservatives. It's just an anomaly that we have it in this country. Now, I want our friends in the National Party, like Matt Canavan and Barnaby Joyce and John Barillaro and you know, John Anderson, people like John Anderson in the past, I want them to be part of the A team, not the B team. And look, Rita, I really want to clear up something that is um, a common misperception out there, and that is that the National Party represents rural seats. Now look, these mm. are, the, these are the, uh, the, 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 the bald facts. There's 151 seats in the House of Representatives. Now of those 151 seats, 61 are classified as either rural or provincial. So there's 61 seats. Now of those 61 seats, the Liberal Party already holds 23. The, the Labor Party holds 19 and the National Party holds 16 up until last week. Now I sort of think it's 15. Even in <laughs> Queensland, uh, the, uh, most of the, nine of the non-Brisbane uh, LNP uh, members of the House of Representatives represent, uh, you know, sit in the Liberal Party party room and only five now sit in the National Party party room. So look, it's, go it's going to make the conservative movement in Australia if our friends in the National Party are in one big tent. How will that change the party room dynamic, though? How is that going to change the mix of moderates and conservatives and whatever comes in between? Well, look, let's think about this, OK. Um, Malcolm Turnbull became the leader, the leader of the Liberal Party and the, subsequently the Prime Minister by about three or four votes. Now, if, if our friends in the National Party happen to be sitting in that same party room, which they do, when the, when the, when the party rooms meet, 95% of the time it's the joint party room. Uh, but they, the Nationals, who are generally conservative, walk out when there's a leadership ballot. So yep. I believe we never would have had a leader like Malcolm Turnbull. What it will oh. do, a merged party will be a party... That's a big selling point, a... isn't it? That's the big oh, selling right. point at, yes, at this point. Yes. We would have never had Malcolm Turnbull if the Liberal Nationals had merged. Now, uh, the Nationals are in all sorts of strife, not just nationally, but you look at uh, the, the party in New South Wales. Uh, it seems to be really lost about who they are, what they stand for, do they actually represent their const constituents. Uh, what is the major objection to a merger? Do they fear completely losing their identity and, and their power base by becoming one? Well, look, they've got a fantastic deal at the moment. OK, so they've got about, I think, 17 members of the House of Representatives out of 151. And they, um, they get the Deputy Prime Ministership for that. They get several mm. cabinet positions. Now, look, it's, they've basically... Look, I say to them as my friends, a lot of the time I feel as though I'm more of a national than a liberal. But the truth is, right, uh, they're getting a free ride at the moment. So, look, I've got a little yeah. bit of news <laughs> for, you, for you and the viewers today, uh, Rita. I can tell the viewers that in the coming months, a new push is going to start in the New South Wales Liberal Party, which is going to initiate the process whereby a merger discussion will be debated by the end of this year. And it will, we're going to we invite... Well, we're, going to propose to the Liberal Party State Council that we initiate this contest, uh, th th this, this merger. But we're also going to debate that going forward, the, the New South Wales Liberal Party should not run a joint ticket with the Nationals for the Senate and the Upper House because they get a lot of Senators and members of the Upper House basically because of the Liberal Party vote. So I want to merge and I... Look, the last time so are you the, saying the that if, if, if the Nationals don't submit to a merge, then the Liberals should sever those ties? OK. If the, well, yes. If, if the Liberals... Well, I think, I think we do both. OK. We just say, OK, look, if you think you want to be your own party... OK, because we're, we're effectively merged at the moment, except for just a, a few little things. Uh, if they don't want to merge, well, let's let them stand on their own feet. Let them run their own Senate tickets and their own upper house tickets. I don't think it'll be that successful. 
Now, the Nationals have traditionally had a problem with independence, with shooters, with one nation and things. Now, I believe that is because the people in the country who follow politics more than people in the city, um, I think they know that the National Party is the B team. And I want young conservative activists from the country to think, I can be the Prime Minister or I can be the Premier by being a member of the A team. It's, it, it makes sense all around. Now, why don't people want to do it? Well, I think it's because there's only one real reason. It's because it's such a good deal for the Nationals. But there are elements in the Liberal Party that also don't want a merger, and that's in the mm -hmm. New South Wales Liberal Party. The, the Nationals, w w we need to understand this, Rita, Nationals do not exist in Tasmania. They do not exist in South Australia. They do not exist federally in Western Australia. In Victoria, your state, there's 38 seats in the House of Representatives uh, in, in Canberra representing Victoria. Three are held by the National Party, three out of 38. Yeah. And the LNP in Queensland is officially a division of the Liberal Party. That, you read the fine print of the Constitution. It is the Liberal Party. Now, there is this anomaly where some of them, when they go to Canberra, they decide to sit in the National Party party room, which is just an anomaly, as I said. Okay, so so it's you're, you're basically party... saying if, if, if this merger happens, what, what it's going to do is change the, uh, the philosophy of that party room. It's going to become more conservative than it is today if you add the national uh, MPs to, to the Liberals. Uh, how do you think that's going to impact on policy decisions? Well, I think, I think it, it will look. The, the same-sex marriage debate showed us that there's uh, almost all of rural Australia voted in favour of same-sex marriage. Lots of parts of mm. Sydney and Melbourne didn't, uh, you know, metropolitan parts. So it's not as though people in the country are like wildly right-wing, but having a merger with the National Party membership, and in most, in, in New South Wales at least, the National Party. Can I pick you up members. on that? I, I've never seen, I've never considered the same-sex marriage debate to be mm -hmm. a left-wing, right-wing issue. Because as you okay. said, the seats that voted no, mainly New South Wales, were very strong Labor seats. Sure. Well, and, right, yes. uh, and the coalition seats, some of the safest seats, were very strong yes votes. I don't know why that debate was always painted as left and right when it was never really about that. Uh, but sorry, I interrupted no, you about. Uh, so, how, how how would I mean, say when it comes to climate change, would that have any sort of an impact on the government's approach to uh, how they approach climate change policies? Well, I believe that people who live in the country, and I spent half my life in, in the country. I believe that they would be a lot more sceptical of the global warming orthodoxy and the National Party membership, I'm sure, is also more sceptical. So if we merge on that particular policy that you've identified, the party will move to the right. Now, what that could mean, it could mean that some of these, I'm talking three or four inner city seats in Sydney and Melbourne, could be lost to a merged party. But I am mm -hmm. absolutely certain that for every one inner city leafy seat that we lose, we're going to pick up two or three in the non-metropolitan areas. Seats like uh, Gilmore and Hunter and uh, Macquarie. These are just seats I can think of off the top of my head in New John, South Wales. John, uh, that, that would be the case regardless of whether there's a merger or not. Uh, the Liberal Party well, seems to be uh, trying to please everybody, including their inner city constituents who are uh, yes. increasingly leaning left and green when it comes to to climate change, uh, so that that is something that that's a decision they're going to have to make either way. Now you've been trying to reform the Liberal Party for years and years. Many years ago, you spoke out about the influence of in-house lobbyists. Are these mm -hmm. in-house lobbyists still influencing policy in 2020? Oh, absolutely. Look, they still run the show in New South Wales. Now the, those lobbyists that you've identified, they will be against the merger because they do not want uh, the. Uh, the people from the country who are generally more conservative, they do not want them being in the party. They're very happy to hive them off. So we have this weird situation where it's meant to be a national parliament and we, you know, we, we, divide, we divide our conservatives. So, yes, the lobbyists are still there and they will resist this, but I'm absolutely certain that the broad membership of the party is in favour of it and that will be tested later this year. Now, just back on the Nationals, uh, obviously uh, they've been lacking a strong leader who can communicate and who's visible. Uh, what do you see as the future of, of the party and who, who is going to be their, their leader in the long term? Because uh, 
in my opinion, I can't see Michael McCormack holding on. Uh, what are your thoughts? Oh, well, yeah, look, he's, he's making no, no impact, uh, but he's the best that they've, they've got at the moment, apparently, or in the eyes of the party room is. The Nationals are in long-term decline. They've got about half the amount of members they had at the 1984 election, and in 1984 there was um, about 30 less f seats in total in the Federal Parliament. The National Party is in decline. Now, in, in Victoria, uh, before your friend Michael Kroger became president about 20 or 30 years ago, the Nationals were very strong in Victoria, and then Michael Kroger bravely took the decision that we're going to contest third party, uh, three-cornered contests when, when a National Party retires. Now, you know what happened there in Victoria? The Liberals usually win three-cornered contests. This tells mm. us that the people in the country actually, in most cases, will prefer to vote for the Liberal Party simply because it is the A-team. And I also fear that there would be some people in the country who may be politically interested and they'll think, yeah, I'm thinking about running for Parliament, uh, but I won't because I'm only going to be in the B-team. I want them all to be in one big happy tent. Look, it's going to solve a lot of problems, Rita. It will be a tough fight, but I, look, once this discussion begins, I believe that we, that we will ev eventually merge. Now, it might take a few years, but we will get there. Now, uh, just lastly, uh, you wrote in your book, Make the Liberal Party Great Again. There's a very good title for a book. You argued in that book that everyday members should have a say in key decisions. Uh, that's another reform you've been trying to push. Just tell me how that would look and how could that possibly work? OK, well, that is the mother of all reforms, Rita. That is the end goal. <laughs> if we want to have really good politics in this country, we need to have a merged lib federal uh, uh, Liberal National Party and we're going to have a big convention every three years of all the members, a lot of them via satellite, and we're going to vote for who our federal parliamentary leader is once every three years. Now, this is what they do in Canada and, the, and uh, England. And look, what we just saw in England with Boris Johnson was elected by the membership by about uh, a two to one ma uh, majority over the guy who was the Remainer. Now, three years earlier, that same party, the British Conservative Party, their party room voted for their leader and they gave us Theresa May. Now, look, I quite like Theresa May, but she was utterly the wrong person to be the leader immediately after the country has voted uh, to leave um, uh, Europe in, in the Brexit referendum. So the stupid party room, which is always uh, motivated by self-interest and who's going to get a ministerial portfolio, when the, the party room voted for Theresa May. Now, when the membership had a say, they voted for a good Conservative who as soon as, as soon as Boris became the leader, they just shot up in the polls. But look, even the Australian Labor Party is giving their membership some say in the, in the leadership. And but John, it's, it's I mean, to, to, to just uh, dispute your British example there, if you give the public a say or the rank and file party members, you can end up with a Jeremy Corbyn who's completely okay. unelectable. The party okay. membership right. loves him, but the rest of the public look at him and just uh, <laughs> run away. Rita. You, OK, now that is true, what you have just described. In a left-wing party, when the membership votes, they're going to do something crazy like elect Jeremy Corbyn. That is true. But <laughs> I'm not concerned about left-wing parties. They can sort themselves out. In a right-of-centre party, like the Canadian Conservative Party, the British Conservative Party, the Australian Liberal Party, when those good people, when they have to vote for the leader, I promise you, they will vote for a fantastic leader. OK, no, I'll take your word for it. There is some record of that, but uh, we'll see. Like you said, it's the, uh, the mother of all reform proposals, so it we is. might have to wait some time before it happens. John Ruddick, thank you it for will. joining us.